So do you think songs, even from the late 80s, that Tupac recorded should uh, have the chance to uh, be online or be released? I I told you earlier, I would love to see everything that he did creatively in its original form okay. available for people to listen to and the stuff that transitioned and changed. Like Ray Love. Ray Love wrote the song Trapped. It was Tupac's first single. Okay. A lot of people don't even know that the first recording of that song, Ray did. Okay. That's history. We were all there. It was a song that Puck felt. It was so powerful that I remember he sat in the room and said, it's almost like we're so connected as brothers now that sometimes you write my words. And I feel like that's my song. And it came through you. And Ray didn't like when he did it. Ray was going to throw it away. And Ray was like, are you for real? And so it was just a beautiful thing. Now, who would know other than those of us that were in the room together and got to share that moment? And so Ray gave it to Pop and said, here. And Pop was like, man, just in honor of like what we did together and how close we are, I'm gonna, this is my first single. And for Tupac, you would have to know how deep that is. Because Tupac was so arrogant in a certain um, way with his creativity that couldn't nobody touch him. Pop will look you in your eyes and say, you can't fuck with me. There is no, man, I'm the best. Tupac Nation Do you understand what I'm exclusive. saying? Yeah, I know. So for him to give somebody that first single... That's a big, big statement. And that should tell people they need to listen to Ray Love's lyrics a little more. Study him. Who did Tupac listen to? Who did he actually spar with, work with, develop with, grow with? You take a little piece of everybody with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry I take interviews and turn them into what I feel like I That's need fine. to share. Well, was there yeah. ever an <laughs> original recorded that song? Because it, there's like a track list of... Uh, Tupac List Now, it says the original, and then it has um, another version that says written by Ray Love. Yeah, there's an original um, version that Ray did, but I don't know if it was ever out. But I, not, I mean... But not original Tupac version with his own lyrics, right? What do you mean? I, I don't know. On the track list, it said original Trapped, and then it, and then it said Trapped with Ray Love or whatever. Like um, The original Trapped is Ray. Ray wrote okay. it. Okay. And Tupac performed Ray's song, not um his it's not Tupac's song. Okay. It's the only song Tupac ever did that he didn't write. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And that was his very first single. And Ray wrote it. Alright, so um going back to when you uh, mentioned the roses from the concrete. So you were the main force behind producing that uh, soundtrack, right? You mean the Rose that grew from Concrete yeah. CD? Yeah. So, so what inspired you to turn the poems into songs? I believe that most songs come from poems anyway, and a lot of pop early poems, they ended up evolving into songs. And so I always wanted to do lots of stuff with the early writing. That's okay. why I'm saying, I mean, there's still, you know, I was part of um, a creative circle. So when you create with people, we all wrote together. You know, there are a whole group of us that every week met, we wrote, and I still do the same thing 21 years later. And back then it was just the writing and the poetry circle. And, you know, for 15 years it's been the microphone sessions. And so I have a process where I write with young people and we create together. And... So I would love to have everybody that wrote together in 1988 and 89 put all their stuff together just so people could read all of our stuff from that time period together. Um, I, I'd love to do all kinds of things that, um, that really give people access to how we all create it because I think that's very important. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing to have been part of writing with such talented people, developing, helping, contributing, learning from um, that whole group. It was an amazing group. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Do you think, uh, 
Tupac changed as person when he signed with Death Row Records and Suge Knight? Oh, gosh. Well, we all change as a person. Tupac went to jail. Okay. Um, do you think that there should be a Tupac movie biopic similar to Notorious? There's no doubt it's going to be a Tupac movie. Tupac is so complicated, it's just when somebody is as powerful as him, it takes a lot longer. You can't just make a quick little movie. His story is an epic, and um, that's why you're calling me to do an interview on him. That's why there's probably millions of hits a day on Facebook and every other search engine just trying to find those. That's why I said we're like a big family, those of us that love Pac. And um, a movie will come, and it will probably take a while longer to figure out who can actually write this story well and who can really bring that. Tupac is no joke. How are you going to just write the Tupac movie? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I hope fans realize that and think about it, you know? Okay. When it does come, it better be a good one. <laughs> there was another movie that came out in 2003, Resurrection. How do you feel about that movie? I think it's great. They did, did a great job. Do you think it touches up on the person that he was? I think there are lots, lots of projects and all together combined, everybody gets the sense of who he was. But you don't even need to see those projects. You listen to his music and... You know, those that love him know who he was and what kind of person he was. That's why you love him. Okay. So when did you actually start working with him? Around what year? When did I? In 88. Okay. And, and when did you stop working with him? I never stopped working with him. He died, and I still work with him every day. <laughs> oh. I, I stopped managing him in oh, yeah, 93. Managing. Okay. But at that point, he started helping me. He directed videos for artists I represented. We flipped, like, our roles. I was really um, a very valuable person in his life and was able to help him at a time he really needed. And then we switched places, and he began to do a lot for me and my work. And um, Was there a reason you stopped managing him? Or... I never wanted to manage him. He made me manage him. I'm an artist. I started out touring. I was in a band. I had a dance company that I ran. I had my work that I do. and I just loved Pac, and I knew so many people in the business that um, basically he said, I need you. You're going to do this, and as soon as I can, I'll let you go, and I'll help you, and that was always our arrangement. Okay, it, has there been any other artists that you managed? Oh my gosh, you have to do a little more um, <laughs> research on my whole history. Yes, I've managed and worked with so many different artists. And, uh, my story's coming, I promise. Okay. <laughs> Tupac once said that he was racist as a child. Did you ever notice this, or did you ever try to help him get out of that phase? Tupac was not racist. Puck, um understood that everybody on some level judges other people based on external forces until they grow and understand that and they make a decision to be part of the problem or part of the solution. And those that really understand and love other people are not able to have hate based on skin color. 